So my family loves Mongolian beef. And I wanted a way to can it and have it on the table quick. So I came up with my own canning recipe. So this is not USDA approved. But I certainly love it. And look at that. Doesn't that look great? Let's go through our ingredients. Um, you also want oil, which I don't have up here for cooking. But we want two pounds flank steak. And I've cut it in nice strips. Remove some of the fat if you're able. And then I have a very, very large sweet onion sliced up. One cup of brown sugar. And here we have two tablespoons fresh garlic and two teaspoons of ginger, fresh ginger paste. And of course you can use fresh ginger and grated also, but I do like these little paste tubes. And here we have one teaspoon of chili paste and two tablespoons of, is it called hoisin sauce? Anyway, right here, that sauce. And we have over there one cup of beef broth and in the back one cup of soy sauce. So let's get started. Okay, we're just lightly browning each side. We don't really need to cook it all the way through because pressure cooking for 90 minutes will certainly do that. So I'm just going to brush a little of this oil on here. Maybe just a little more. Put each piece here. And of course you can use a frying pan, a wok, whatever you want to. This, I have found, is just a little easier when you have to do a lot of pieces of meat. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. I flipped them all, and now I'm just going to get this side done, then i got to do another batch. Okay, so I think we've got enough oil on here yet, we don't have to add something. Let's get some of the good drippings up here. Now it's time to do the onions. And again, we're only just trying to get them a little brown. They will cook when they're processing for 90 minutes. I don't like that piece right there. Yeah. And I'm going to turn up the heat a little too high. I've had it on medium. Okay, I think they're about ready. You can see they have a little bit of a light brown color. They're no longer completely white. They've absorbed the meat juices and the oil. And they smell delicious. And again, they will cook further when you're processing in your canner. So everything is now off the griddle. Here's the meat, nicely brown. 
Here's the onions, kind of a little yellow brown. Time to get making the sauce. Well, your hard part is done. Now we're going to turn on this burner on to high. Put in a little oil, about a teaspoon. There we go. Let that heat up a minute. Now we're going to want to add the ginger and the garlic paste. There it sizzles. And we're going to wait about 15 seconds before we add something else. And it's a little too high. Turn that down just a little. Okay, now it's time to add our chili paste. A little hoisting oil in there too. Just browning the stuff up a little. Get a nice base. Now let's add our chicken stock. Soy, our hoisin sauce, get it all out there, stir it up a bit, and then we're going to add our brown sugar. Melt that brown sugar. So I'm just going to stir this up a little. You're almost ready to add everything to your canning jars. And you're going to need three quart jars that cook just a little longer. Now let's do a little taste test. Got to blow on it, it goes really hot. Smells good. Mmm. Sweet, but you got the hint a little bit of that chili, garlic. This is a good sauce. We want to divide our meat evenly, well, as evenly as we can between the three jars. some of the juice here. When you warm this up, you're going to add cornstarch to this juice. Okay, I'm back. It was easy to make more sauce. You know what? If I do this again, I think I'm going to just do it in pint jars. It's kind of following a canning process for this that I saw at another site. I'll mention it down below. But you know, I really think there's enough sauce and meat and onions just to do this in a pint jar. So live and learn. That's when you're making up your own canning recipes. You don't always get it right the first time. But the sauce just tastes so good. I didn't want to dilute it completely. Wipe the rims, because we do know some <laughs> onions splattered on it. There we go. Put a 
them in our canner. One. Gotta be careful, I have a light system and vent system above the pressure canner and I don't want to hit that. There we go. I've inspected my vent, make sure I can see through that hole so I know that nothing's blocking it. I didn't need to actually lubricate the lip because I done it the last time so it's fine. And now I just need to screw on the lid. Now once the steam comes out here, we'll let it steam for 10 minutes and then we'll place on the weight. Then we want to get this gauge up to, in my altitude, 10. And then we'll start timing it for 90 minutes. Okay, it's now the next day and it's evening and you'll notice I have two nicely sealed quart jars. I don't know if you caught that. I said two nicely sealed quart jars. One did not seal. That happens occasionally. And what it means is, I already tonight get to try out making the Mongolian beef. Let's see how it tastes. So, see in the middle? Definitely didn't seal. There we go. So, I'm going to pour off some of this juice right now. Let that drain a minute. I've heated up just a little oil in the skillet. Gonna put our drained meat in there. I'm gonna let this warm up. So I'm gonna pour about a cup of this sauce in here. There we go. Usually you add two tablespoons of cornstarch to thicken, but I'm only going to put in one because where we get it, actually it's pretty liquidy. Then we're just going to, since this is cold, you don't have to make a slurry first of the cornstarch. If this was hot, you'd want to put your cornstarch in cold water and whip it up really well before you add it to the sauce. But that's not a problem here because the sauce is cold. Okay, so it's ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's smelling good. I don't know if you can see by the amount of meat and onions in here. This is really, when I print the recipe, down below, I'm going to do it for pint jars. That's the way I'm going to make it again. I think it's just fine in pint jars. Because as you can see, we have too much liquid. Just keep warming that up a little. Now we're just going to pour the sauce in to warm up. Thicken a bit as it warms up. Probably a cup might have even been too much of this sauce, but that's what we got. We don't always have to use all the sauce. Doesn't that look good and rich? I just cut up the ends of some green onions and put it on top. Now let's try our taste test. Here it goes. Mmm, this is really good. The sauce is really, really rich. One more bite here. And the meat is just melting in my mouth. This is definitely a keeper. 
So this is Prepper Potpourri saying please subscribe, share the knowledge, hope you enjoy this Mongolian beef recipe. You can make it without canning if you'd like. Always subscribe and share the knowledge and thank you so much for your support. If you want to be notified, hit that little bell below. Till next time.